Hey everyone, I am working on a 580K case backhoe. This is the K, not the Super K. And I just wanted to give a little overview on how to pull apart one of the, the front final drives on the front tires. So this one, as you can see, has already been removed off the machine. Um, so to start with, normally this is your planetary housing. And when you, it'll already be on here, I've pulled it off. But to remove it, pretty simple. You've got um, a couple Allens right here. There's going to be two of them, just 180 degrees off of each other. And if it's, uh, this machine had about 8,000 hours on it and it has been used on our farm and ranch and runs around in horse crap all day. So a lot of the bolts are nice and rusted tight. So I actually had to get a torch, as you can see, and heat those heads just a little bit to get them to break loose. Um, when I tried to break them loose, they wanted to strip out. So add a little heat to them and they popped right out. So once you um, remove those, then it's a simple matter. Um, again, 180 degrees apart from each other, there's these indentations and you can just get a chisel and a little sledge and start pounding in there and it'll start separating and you might need to get some screwdrivers in there and do some wiggling. So when this thing sits on here, there's two guide pins. There's one right here and 180 degrees off again. There's the other one. So you just gotta work the um, this cover off of those guide pins. So once you get that off, then this is what you have on the other side. So here's your planetaries, all your, your gears, and this one's in good shape. I'm actually pulling this one apart because the uh, seal's gone out. And we had to do some other extensive work changing the, the axle seals on the rest of the axle. So um, yeah, just pulling the whole thing apart and giving it an overhaul. So once you get it apart, uh, you'll remove these eight bolts. Now to, to pull off this ring gear right here, this is what holds every, holds your, your hub in place and keeps the tension on your bearings. You'll take your bolts and you're gonna screw four bolts into these holes here. And when you thread those in, it's going to pull that ring gear off. First time I went to remove one of these, <clears throat> it was at night and this thing was full of, the other side was full of sludge and I couldn't even hard, I couldn't even see these holes. So I was having a, it had been a while since I had had one of these apart and I couldn't remember how to get that ring gear off. So I wanted to provide this video for anyone that's stuck in the same situation I was in. So we're going to go ahead and I'm gonna put my impact on those and just tap them all the way around until that ring gear will just pop off. And you'll see once we get this off that each one of these, they look like washers, but they're actually, um, Actually, I think I have right over here the replacement for the other side. You can see they're little cylinders, so you can't just yank this thing off. You're going to have to drive it off with those bolts. And it's a little tight, so that's what I'm going to do next. And then I'll pick back up after I get those done. All right, so I just turned each bolt about half a turn at a time. And... She's off. So there you go. Bolts just, sorry, a little bit of a glare there. <laughs> Snow in my bed. So the bolts just push through against the housing right here and just drive that bad boy off. So one thing I did fail to mention, uh, I had already removed the axle shaft. So when you pull that apart, there's gonna be a snap ring right on, right on the end right here. And behind the snap ring, you're gonna have the gear and then this thick old washer, spacer more like. And then this is, sits right against the housing right there. So there's a little notch right there that, keep, that keeps this washer from spinning. So it sits right in between two bolt heads. And I'll uh, show it going back together when I put this thing together in a few days when I get a few more parts. Um, yeah, so now that uh, this housing, this uh, hub right here, should just pull right off there. And then I will get that separated 
and pull out the old seal and we'll put the new seal in. All right, got that pulled off. So it was a nice tap with the dead blow hammer there and it just popped right out. So that was where the bearing was, the outer bearing. So we'll set that side here. Then this bearing just slides onto this shaft right here. So that just, just Need a third hand here. So yeah, I just worked that off with the screwdriver and uh, yeah, I'm gonna pull that off, get everything cleaned up. So the new seal, or the old seal for that matter, is right here in the back. So we'll just go ahead and pop this seal out right here. And then I got the new seal we'll put back in. And the seal's big enough that the bearing race can just go right through it. Sometimes when you install seals, you gotta put the bearing in first and then the seal, or it won't fit. But on this one, that's not the case. And on, on the inside of the steering knuckle here, we've got another seal that seals the shaft so that the oil can't leak back out. So this seal is bad and, and this seal is bad. So after I chip out all this horse crap, I'll pull this seal out. Then also there is a bushing down in here that, you know, if it's worn out, you can replace it or, uh, just leave it as is up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and get that all cleaned up and ready to go back together. All right. I got the bushing out so you can see she's a little worse for wear. So I'll go ahead and order a bushing for that. Get that pressed in there. When I put the, the bushing in the other one, I just stuck it in a press this side down. And I just drove it straight in through there. So if that works for you, great. If not, you can figure out how you want to do it. But the new bush, it's interesting down here in this, in the shaft there, or in this uh, cylinder where the uh, axle shaft goes through, you can feel where this side closest where I'm touching with my finger is actually a slightly smaller diameter than about halfway down. So this bushing only makes contact probably from about where you can see that line right there back this way. The rest of this bushing is just free floating down in there. Now, when I ordered the new bushing and I, re I put it in, I'll have to come over and show you on this. We had to put a new knuckle on the other side so you can see the new bushing is quite a bit shorter and you can see there's a lip in there that it only goes in so far and I, i'm not sure what the purpose was of having a longer bushing on the original but the update looks like it shortened so this guy yep got the seal pushed in there and everything so this one's ready to go and that's the new hub for the other side. So the old, what happened on the old one is the, it lost lubrication and the bearings went out and grenaded. So it blew up all the gears. And then while it was being driven around in that condition, this lip right here where the, where the seal rides, it rounded this off. So this bad boy right here was $1,500. So good reason to check your oil. And if something goes wrong, stop and figure out what it is before you drive it anymore. So the old seal actually had an inner wear ring, which you can see it lip right here. It's different than the main material. So I kind of hit on it for a second with a chisel. Sometimes... You can turn a chisel sideways and hit it real hard, like so, and it'll spread them a little bit. If you have a torch, which is usually the easiest, just hurry and heat it up red, and it'll pop right off. So that's what I'm going to do now. The new seal actually doesn't have that wear ring, but it does spin on the outside, I think. 
yeah, this inner, this inner rubber portion spins separate from that ring. So when it's all pressed together, the idea is this stays stationary on the knuckle right here and the ring stays stationary within the hub and then the wear surface is right inside here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that ring off and I'm getting close to having it ready to go. I just need to order a few more parts for it. Okay, heated it up right there. It took me about 20 seconds. And I just uh, got my gasket scraper here, just tapped it and it popped it loose. So now I'm just working my way around it. If it happens to get stuck again, I'll heat it up one more time, but looks like it's still moving. I'll probably get my screwdriver in there now. So I'll just keep on working that up and then it'll be off. Even better, heat it up and then hit it with a chisel. Sucker popped right off. So yeah, that's uh, about it. So now I'm just gonna get my drill with my wire wheel on there and clean up that surface and make sure there shouldn't be any damage on it. It looks like it's in good shape, especially with that wire ring on there. And finish getting everything cleaned up. Wash out the bearings, because they were kind of had some nasty oil in there. So I'll get them cleaned up, make sure they're in good shape, check my races, and oh yeah, I'll pop this seal out too. So easiest way to pop seal out. If you have a heel bar. If not, you might as well go buy yourself one. These are snap-on. I don't know how harbor freights are, but I imagine they wouldn't be too bad, but Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. So usually you can just, I don't know if I can do this one-handed, but you just get around like this and start working your way on it. Um, worst case, you could get your torch. You can heat it up, do a little light cutting on it if you need to. Um, if you can hold it down, you could stick a pry bar across here and pop it out. So there's kind of a number of ways to get them out. They're not too bad. And even and you can do as much damage to it as you want because you don't have to reuse it. All right, I want to make sure I don't lead you astray. So this thing doesn't have a whole lot to grab onto. And with it being so big around, it's it, uh, a little bit harder to pop it out with the heel bar. You might be able to, but the bottom of it, there's a little teeny lip. So what I did, I just got a chisel and pounded the rubber part away from it. Then I just got my torch heated up and just tapped the oxygen just a teeny bit and it just blew it right out. So now it's loose. And just clean that up, skosh. There we go, out and ready for the new one.